the previous video, you looked at the first step of conducting a climate change vulnerability assessment, which was identifying a list of climate change indicators. In this video, you're going to look at the second step of the climate change vulnerability assessment, which helps you to determine whether or not you're exposed to the climate change indicators in the list. You can approach the second step by asking yourself, will this particular impact take place in my area or will I be exposed to this particular climate change indicator? You usually answer this exposure question with a yes or a no answer. Let's look at an exposure example using the downloaded Excel vulnerability assessment sheet. When you open the sheet, column C lists all the climate change indicators which have been determined for each sector. Column D provides a detailed description of the indicators. Moving across the columns, you will see the different vulnerability assessment steps. We will focus on the exposure columns for now. Let's take an example from the human settlement sector. One of the indicators in the sector is that climate change will result in increased impacts on informal dwellings. The indicator description states that already vulnerable dwellings and settlements that are often unplanned and without extensive services or infrastructure are vulnerable to climate change. The exposure question in column E reads, do you have informal dwellings in your area? You can respond to this question using resources available on the Let's Respond Toolkit website and your own knowledge of the area. There are various maps and indicators and reports which link directly to each of the indicators. These can help guide you in answering each of the steps in the vulnerability assessment. Here you can see an example of a human settlements map, which can be used when responding to some of the questions. You can zoom into your particular area or municipality and click on the map for more information. You can also use the long-term adaptation scenarios reports for each of the sectors. This is the report for the human settlement sector and provides detailed technical information on the potential impacts of climate change on the human settlement sector. Now, to get back to our example, let's say your response to the question, do you have informal dwellings in your area, is yes. You can go ahead and add this response to column F. If your answer was no, you would then add your response by typing in no to the same column. In the next column, to the right, column G, you can add any additional comments to support or elaborate your response. It is a good idea to include comments here so that when other stakeholders review your plan, they can understand why you have answered this question as a yes or no. Let's look at another example in the agriculture sector. One of the indicators in this sector is increased risk to livestock. The indicator description states that decreases in rainfall and herbage yields will result in negative impacts for livestock. Again, using our knowledge of the area or resources such as census data, LTAS reports from the Let's Respond Toolkit website, you can then respond with either a yes or a no answer. You have now gone through steps one and two of the climate change vulnerability assessment. You have developed a list of climate change indicators through step one and have assessed whether your area will be exposed to these indicators by answering yes or no in step two. In the next video, we move on to step three of the vulnerability assessment, which helps you to determine how sensitive your area is to the different climate change indicators.